I feel like I had heard you maybe give little dribbles and drabs here and there, maybe make a comment here or there about your experience on Vanderpump Rules, but it wasn't until this Instagram Live where you really kind of let it all out. Uh, how are you feeling after deciding just to talk about it? Well, at that time, I had already gone through my two years of pain and being in like that, that dark space I was in, to hear all those things. So I grew, I did some spiritual growth, so I was in a better space, but I, I still had a little bit of, um you know, pent up, just a little bit of pent up sadness in me from that fact that that even happened to me. Um, so when I spoke about it on live, it, it felt like live therapy. <laughs> um, saying it to Candace, for I'm sure, and then to the audience, um, it felt good because that was the first time that I felt like people had my back and that I was being hurt. It hit the ceiling for me and made me really want to run for the hills when, um, Kristen and Stassi decided they were going to call the cops on me. This is when I quit. Like, I left the show, I was invited back, but, you know, to tell my truth, but decided it wasn't going to do anything for me. So I ended up not doing that. After you did the Instagram Live, did you hear from anybody on the cast, good or bad? I did. Uh, Lala talked to me, actually. Mm -hmm. I haven't talked to her in so long, and I didn't know if it was going to go well or not because I know that the, at least the last thing I heard about her was the Watch What Happens Live. She did with Eddie Cohen where somebody called in and asked, how do you feel about Faith's, you know, baby? And then she goes, who's Faith? She Mariah, she Mariah carried me. Mm. <laughs> and uh, that was my girlfriend. So I didn't know if we were going to have a good conversation, but she had recently lost her father and I know her father very, very mm. well. So I, I wanted to give her my condolences. And then from there, it just went in a very good direction and she wanted to start over with a clean slate. Um, also, Ariana um, DM'd me and told me congratulations on my newborn baby as well. Mm -hmm. So those two have been um, very warm. Um, I haven't heard from anyone else. Mm -hmm. um, just the statements that they put out on Instagram that I think was supposed to be an apology. So neither Stasi nor Kristen have reached out to you personally since all of this came to light? Um, so I believe Kristen, Kristen did DM me um, like last minute. So like when, after all the pressure, I think kind of got to her, I kept seeing people mm -hmm. say, you know, apologize, apologize, apologize personally. So she DM'd me um, and said, you know, she's really sorry and that she should have came forward a long time ago and apologized personally to me. Well, now you hear the news that both Stassi and Kristen have been fired from the show. When that news broke yesterday, I mean, what went through your mind? I, I'm not gonna lie. At first I was like, wow, like this is gonna change their lives. And um, I wasn't necessarily happy about it, but what I was uh, happy about was Bravo um, this huge production company taking taking the time to give a voice back to the people and say we hear you mm -hmm. and that that's to me what that was is Bravo saying we're not you know a, a, a platform that's going to just ignore what's happening in today in society and, and all the injustices that's going on we hear you and that made me feel really 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 good because I I didn't think that it would go that far um, so um, I, it's a it's a it's a production company and a network that I can be proud of that will take a stance on something like that because that really affected me. Casting directors would have to ask me, "Have you drugged anybody before? Have wow. you robbed anyone before?" And sometimes, you know, you won't get casted for things like that because they have that that worry that that's something that you did. So that was something I was attached to for two years. And my family is a very proud family, and I felt so ashamed. But Bravo, I feel like they've seen that. And I, I think they took a stance on that. And I'm, I'm happy to hear that MTV is also following suit doing the same thing. Do you feel like that it was two years too late? Because again, you said this happened in 2018. Do you feel like Lisa Vanderpump closed her eyes to it and maybe she should have fired Stassi then? Um, I wish, even if she didn't let them go, I wish she would have let them know it was an issue. Mm. It, let them know that she had a problem with it because they all look up to her. They have relationships with, with Miss Vanderpump. Um, I necessarily didn't have a real relationship with her, but I had a very big respect for her and what she's done and the terrible things she does. Events she pulls for um, West Hollywood, and LGBTQ, and the Dogs and the Human Festival. So I expected, you know, for her to have this as a concern for her as well. And unfortunately, it just she just looked past it. And, but 
Um, or maybe she it didn't. Maybe she didn't know about it. I don't know. I was gonna say, did she know about? I mean, because you also said that Brittany Cartwright called you nappy headed, yes, um, and that things like that were happening. I mean, we saw on the show kind of the reaction after the incident with you and Jax. We saw the fallout from that. Did Did Lisa know any of this? Did you ever tell her? I mean, you were close with her son, weren't you? Yeah. Matt? Yes. Um, she knew about the fighting and the ongoings with me and Brittany because, um, to be honest with you, I think she knew about the incident between me and Jax before filming even started. She's a producer on the show, so um, I knew that she knew something about it from what, from my understanding, what I was told. But um, the nappy headed comments, the 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 podcast, Lisa doesn't have, I'm sure she doesn't have time for that kind of stuff. But um, once she is aware of it, that's when I would, would expect her to kind of like have something to say about it to help them. This is her sh platform as well. So what they do also is a reflection of, you know, her stage and what she's bringing out to the public. So, I mean, there's maybe th there's still time. I mean, maybe she will make a statement. I don't, I, I don't know. Brittany says, because there were there was backlash against her as well. She says she never said that, that she never called you that, that that never happened. I'm glad you brought that up because I would love to address that because I've been getting questions saying if I ever apologize to her um, because that was a that was a big thing for me to do. Um, I'm the kind of person where I'm always going to admit when I'm wrong. I've always done that. Um, the military, my eight years of service has taught me that. My parents have taught me that. So when it, this did happen, Sheena called me. Uh, I think they were filming in the background, I'm not sure. I could hear Brittany in the background screaming and stuff. And I'm like, Brittany, I just wanted you to know that I wanted to talk to you in person. If you ever have time, can we just talk? Because I want to apologize to you. And then at this time, she's still upset, as she should be upset. But she's screaming and saying, like calling me names, a B word and things like that. But I'm holding it together and I'm still apologizing. I'm trying to stay calm because I know that I hurt her. So um, I'm taking it, I'm taking the attacks, I'm taking the verbal attacks and then I try again to apologize, and then I hear her call me, you know, a nappy headed hoe. Mm -hmm. So I'm still a human being at the end of the day. I, I, I do have a temper. So that's when I decided I'm gonna get off the phone before this gets worse, right. and I hung up. I could only apologize so much, but I don't think she was ready to receive me at these times that I apologize. Um, I still hope that she can find it in her heart to, to move forward from that and accept my apology, because it, it is heartfelt, it is sincere. Um, but once it gets to name calling and talking about the texture of my hair, that's something I don't want to change. And I'm very proud of. Um, I just, I can't, I can't give you any more of my spirit at the end of the day. I have to move forward. Well, let me ask you this. When you first heard Stassi saying on that podcast, the things that her and Kristen had done and the fact that they mm -hmm. tried to get you arrested for something you did not do. <sighs> You're doing it to me. I told myself I was not gonna cry again this time because I cried last time I did this to you guys. Um, oh, it 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 was very painful. I went. I was in a very, I was in a very bad spot because I had never experienced that kind of bullying before. I had just I was just getting over the bullying that I was getting from the Vanderpump fans um, with with me and Brittany. And I was trying to move forward with my life. And then I got the call from MTV. They, they were so excited to have me. So then I get this boom, like in my face saying that they were trying to pretty much destroy me, especially dealing with the cops. Cause I, I have a, I have kind of a fear for the, of, of, of police um, enforcement because of all the things that's happening. Um, and at that time, when I heard about, about when they called, I remember that night because I had seen one of the girls at Boots and Bellows. Um, it's a nightclub. So I'm like, wow, if the cops had came that night and suspected me to be a woman that would drug people, like date rape, drug them, they would not have come in a domestic, let's talk about it kind of way. They really, really wanted me to go down so bad. So when that did not work for them, they called, they tried to contact the military. They tried to have the military also, um, arrest me or, or, or take me down as well because they thought I went AWOL not knowing that I have honorable discharge papers that show that I had I done my eight years of service for my country. So they try to take that from me too. And then when that didn't work, they said the night of um, the scandal, when it all came out, the night of Sheena's birthday party, Jax Carl went missing out of his home. They said that I was the person that went into his home and did Grand Theft Auto 
Like mm -hmm. I, I went and broke into his home and stole his car. So they said so much that it, it was it was hard to take in and I was really numb at that moment because it was so, it sounded like a movie, mm -hmm. um, a really bad movie. But Faith, if I'm not mistaken, didn't Jack say that same thing? Didn't he publicly also say that you were wanted for Grand Theft Auto? I think I saw it on his Twitter that you were a wanted felon, that you had been drugging and robbing people. Didn't he say that too? He did. He did. I didn't see it till later on because um, I was trying to stay away, far away from him as possible. Um, but uh, somebody sent it to me and I seen, seen it. And Should <sighs> he be fired too? I think he's probably had more um, more terrible things to say than these two young ladies. I've, I've gotten emails and DMs from ladies um, from different shows. I believe one of them was a fiance show, a 90 Day Fiance or something like that show where he attacked her husband saying, you know, her husband, he's, she's, a, she's a white woman dating a black man and she attacked his, her black husband, yes. his, his black features. Um, he's said very, very mean things to new cast members. He, he did not receive me and Lala Kent very well when we first started. He said very mean things to us as well. Later on apologizing, but that's, it seems like he continues to get away with everything he does. And I'm, I'm not sure why, especially at his age. Um, it's not like he's doing this as a young adult, as a kid and just, you know, making these little mistakes young people sometimes do he's a grown man and he's deciding this is a life he wants to live and, and i feel like lisa definitely needs to tell him he's wrong and not just in a show way that she does on the show she needs to really reprimand him off the show as well so i assume you you do think jack should be held accountable yes, I think for, should for accountable. his part in this as well have you heard from lisa at all no no, I reached out to her daughter, um, I want to say a year ago. Mm -hmm. I emailed Pandora a year ago and I reached out. I don't know if she got my email, um, but I reached out and I just said, you know, um, it was, I think it was for, for her and Lisa. And I would love to sit down and talk with you guys. Cause I also, this is another chance to be trying to get Brittany to hear my apology. Cause that's something I really wanted her to hear even after the slander. Um, I wanted her to hear that from me because I don't want to go through life for her thinking that I just didn't think I was just wrong. I wanted her to know that. And no one reached back out to me. I feel like, you know, they, their lives were moving forward and, you know, their shows were moving forward and they just didn't care about me. And that goes to show that I don't think I would have gotten an apology from those girls. Had those girls, had this not have come out and I went to them privately and I said, hey girls, what you said about me really hurt my feelings. It destroyed my life. I do not think they would have cared. So you don't think what they said was since their apology was sincere? You think it was for show and for public to try to save themselves? I, I can only I can only say what I would have done. Um, when I hurt somebody, I want to reach out to them and let them know as many times as I can that I want them I want them to hear me and, tell, and, and hear my apology sincerely. And I I think their statements was was with I think it was uniform one within one second of each other when they were released. Mm -hmm. Very similar statements. I believe even Christian said even though my comments weren't racially driven. It's like, it's so biased. It's like, you guys don't even know how I felt about it to say that. You don't know how I felt or how my family felt or my black friends, my black cousins, my, my all of my people. Mm. We did take that racially because it was racial profile. You knew it wasn't me. I think in my heart they knew it wasn't me. So I, I I don't know. I, I don't think um, I could have received it. I did receive it as what it was and that I received it as a statement. Do you think the show should be canceled? Um, no, I think the show is a, is a great, great idea. I just think that maybe they could put people out there that could, you know, um, give a voice to people and, and be more relatable to people of non-color, uh, something, because there's no people of color on that show. Um, I, th I think it needs to be revamped and it needs to be done right. Because, I mean, as we've seen now, there's two people on that show that also has racist tweets, racial backgrounds. And it just goes to show that they're just not being vetted correctly. I don't. I think they're just putting people on who have the look, um, who can make a really good show. But it's more than that. And um, I believe Vanderpump is, is really fun to watch if they can just recast it maybe and have people on there that actually have some depth. And, um, you know, just... Just maybe just not be a racist. <laughs>